Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Inside the Inferno. I'm Aaron Gonzalez and as we kick off the month of November, alongside me on the desk is Kobe Bronstein. Kobe, are you ready for today's show? I sure am, Aaron, and we have a lot to cover today in the world of ASU sports. Without further ado, let's get this show started. ASU football traveled to Colorado last Saturday, seeking their first win at Folsom Field since 2014. Inferno Intel's Ryan Blank has the recap with what transpired in Boulder. Last week, Arizona State hit the road to take on a struggling Colorado team. The Sun Devils trampled the Buffaloes, winning 42-34. to Two new faces led the ASU offense this past week. Head coach Sean Aguano took a more involved role in play calling, and Trent Borgay made his first career start under center. In total, ASU finished with 557 yards of total offense and succeeded on third down, going 7-14 for 14 in such situations. Borgay set a new record for the most passing yards by a quarterback in their first career start, with 435 yards through the air. A trio of hat-tricks fueled the offensive explosion as well. Borgay threw for three touchdowns, Xavier Valade ran for three touchdowns, and tight end Jalen Conyers hauled in all three touchdown passes from Borgay. Borgay's connection with Conyers and fellow tight end Messiah Swinson was something that stood out. In the first seven games, the tight ends for ASU accounted for only 167 total receiving yards. But against Colorado, Conyers and Swinson totaled a combined 163 receiving yards. The defense struggled, allowing a season high in points for the Colorado offense. However, Arizona State was able to come away with their first victory at Folsom Field since 2014. This week, Arizona State comes back home for family weekend as they host the number 12 UCLA Bruins. In Tempe, Ryan Blank, Inferno Intel. Ryan, thank you for that report. The Sun Devils are looking to keep the winning momentum going as they welcome the number 12 UCLA Bruins at home. Inferno Intel reporter Nicholas Hodel gives us a preview of what to expect in this week's gridiron matchup. The Sun Devils will find some harder challenges when they take on the number 12 UCLA Bruins on Saturday night. However, the Bruins are not a terrific team on defense. The Bruins are barely ranked inside the top 75 nationally in passing defense. The Bruins are a bit better at stopping the run, where they sit just outside of the top 40 nationally, with an average of 125.1 rushing yards allowed per game. However, UCLA's past three opponents, including Stanford last week, have managed to run for over 140 yards. That may be good news for ASU's ex Valade, who is the second leading rusher in the Pac-12 of 760 rushing yards this season. The major issues for the Sun Devils will be on the other side of the ball, where UCLA is one of the top offensive teams in the nation. The Bruins have the 11th best scoring average in the country at 39.6 points per game with at least 30 points in every single game this season. UCLA has the one runner in the conference better than Valade and Zach Charbonnet. Hardly anyone in the conference has had an answer for him as he has rushed for at least 100 yards in his last seven Pac-12 games and scored a rushing touchdown in his last nine Pac-12 games. He enters Saturday with a whopping 137.7 rushing yards per game this season, good for third in the country. UCLA's quarterback, redshirt senior Dorian Thompson Robinson, provides ASU's defense with a challenge of facing one of the nation's most efficient passers. His completion percentage is 72.3%, good for fifth in the country. He is also a dual threat quarterback with a rushing touchdown in three of his last four games. That's notable as the Bruins are 13 and three when he scores a rushing touchdown. His passing efficiency has left the passing game to be a consistent threat, putting up over 250 passing yards in all but one game. That just happened to be against Stanford one week ago. It's a small glimmer of hope for the Sun Devils as they've matched up against one of the Pac-12's best teams. Thank you, Nicholas. Sean and Guano and company have a tough task on their hands against the Bruins, but knocking them off in improbable fashion will certainly electrify the Sun Devil faithful on Parents Weekend. Moving along to men's basketball now, ASU kicks off the 2022 to 2023 season next week with a number of fresh faces looking to make an immediate impact. Inferno Entel's Ben Yates has more. The ASU men's basketball season starts this upcoming Monday, and after a huge roster turnover from last season, the expectations for this team are up in the air. The Sun Devils lost two veteran players in Kamani Lawrence and Marion Jackson, and as well as Jay Heath who transferred to Georgetown. All of them left voids for Coach Bobby Hurley to fill. But the Devils got a new transfer of their own and Frankie Collins from Michigan. This is the guy to keep an eye on. Collins has a lot of upsides, but his game may be all too similar to his new teammate DJ Horn. It's hard to see how these two will play together or if they'll even be on the court at the same time. While Collins is a huge question mark, Coach Hurley also got three freshmen who will fill serious needs that Jackson and Lawrence left the Devils to handle. 
Austin Nunez is a long distance shooter, but be careful, he's knocking them down left handed. Another key freshman is Duke Brennan, who can be seen down low, filling the defensive void that Kamani Lawrence left behind. The two key trans returners are DJ Horn and Marcus Bagley. But don't sleep on Devin Cambridge. His inside game will be critical to the Sun Devils' success this year. This is a w very well-seasoned team. Half of them are upperclassmen. Last season was far below Bobby Hurley's aspirations. But this year's team has a lot of potential. Only time will tell how far these guys can go. Ben, thank you. We wish nothing but the best this upcoming season for Bobby Hurley and the new look Sun Devil basketball squad. As the old saying goes, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Inside the Inferno reporter Kyle Kerkorian tells us about the latest victory in ASU men's hockey. The Sun Devils took a road trip to Sin City to take on the University of North Dakota Fighting Hawks. The game started slow for the Sun Devils as the Fighting Hawks scored twice just only 10 minutes into the first period. Unfortunately for the Hawks, this would be the only time they could put points onto the board, and they were held scoreless for the rest of the game thanks to the great TJ Semptenfelter racking up a total of 13 saves. A goal by forward Matthew Copperwood in the first and a goal by forward Lucas Sillinger in the second would tie the score 2-2. Two two. And then early into the third, forward Robert Master Simone scored the game-stealing goal which would leave the Devils to victory. Head coach Greg Powers dubbed this game as a benchmark win in the biggest game in program history. The Sun Devils are now ranked at the number 20 spot by the USA Hockey Magazine after their David vs. Goliath win. These Sun Devils have something to prove. The Sun Devils will be hosting Alaska Anchorage on the 11th and 12th of November at 7 p.m. And like I said last week, if you haven't made your way to Mullet Arena yet this season, you are surely missing out. Kyle, thank you. The win over the Fighting Hawks marks the ninth upset of a top 10 opponent in ASU's seven-year history. Truly a remarkable feat. Next up is Sun Devil Volleyball, where the team has been up and down as of lately, going just three and four in their last seven contests, not to mention against some of the toughest competition in the Pac-12. Inside the Inferno reporters, Alex DaCosta and Carly Koskovich highlight the outcomes from their most recent games. After away games against the Washington Pac-12 teams, the Sun Devils returned home and started the weekend off strong with a clean sweep against Oregon State in Friday night's match. Junior pin hitter Marta Levinska had an outstanding night, leading the team with 20 kills. Moving on to Sunday's match, Arizona State fell short against the Oregon Ducks. The Sun Devils put up a fight, but the Ducks offense stayed on top, finishing with 53 kills compared to the Sun Devils' 38 kills. The Sun Devils will leave the desert to travel to Southern California. Well, they will play USC on Friday and then head over to the Bruins court to play UCLA on Sunday. Don't miss it this weekend. Now sending it back to Aaron and Kobe at the desk. Alex, thank you. We're hoping the women's volleyball team will come out victorious in their California matchups. ASU women's basketball season is right around the corner, and Inside the Inferno reporter Aaron Herpy tells us about the new head coach and a new look squad. A new era of Sun Devil women's basketball begins this season, led by head coach Natasha Adair. Adair came to ASU following five seasons at Delaware, where she led the Blue Hens to their first NCAA appearance in nearly a decade. Following with there is junior guard Ty Skinner, who led Delaware in assists and three-pointers last season. Under Charlie Turner Thorne last season, the Sun Devils finished 12-14 and 4-9 and and in the Pac-12. Although some of last year's starters, like Taya Hansen, are no longer with the team, ASU returns Jaden Simmons and Sidney Erickstrup, who are both expected to be big contributors this season. The Sun Devils would kick off their season with a matchup against NAU on November 7th at 8 p.m. at Desert Financial Arena. Thank you, Aaron. ASU soccer suffered a setback the last time they stepped out on the pitch, but they hope to claim victory in their final matchup of the regular season against the University of Arizona. Inside the Inferno's reporter, Douglas Santo has the details. Coming off a big win against Oregon, the Sun Devils look to keep that momentum going into their matchup with the Oregon State Beavers. Unfortunately, despite dominating the stat sheet, they were unable to come out with the victory. Nicole Douglas started right where she left off in her record-breaking four-goal performance against Oregon by getting the Sun Devils off to a strong start with a goal coming off a penalty kick in the 16th minute. But the Beavers responded rather quickly with a goal in the 31st minute to even the score. Goalkeeper Pauline Nels made an outstanding sliding save in the 39th minute to keep the game tied going into halftime. But in the second half, the Beavers took a 3-1 lead on a pair of goals in the 57th and 67th minutes. Both goals came off rebounds after Pauline Nels saved the initial shot attempt. Despite outshooting the Beavers 7-1 in the final 33 minutes of the game, the Sun Devils could not mount a comeback. The Sun Devils did, however, turn in strong performances by Nicole Douglas, who led the team with five shots and one goal, and Inacia Cologne and an Olivia Wynn, 
who turned in very accurate performances, accumulating three and two shots respectively, all being on goal. Although the night didn't go as planned on the scoreboard, it was still a special night as the seven fifth-year seniors were recognized for senior night, celebrating one of the best senior classes in the history of the program. Now looking forward, the Sun Devils will end their season with a rivalry game at home against Arizona, with a chance to jump the Wildcats in the Pac-12 standings with a win. A win would also end their current seven-game losing streak to the Wildcats and give them the upper hand in the all-time series, which is currently tied 10-10. to Douglas, thank you. And just like that, we wrap up another weekly edition of Inside the Inferno. And we hope you enjoyed today's show. If you did, you can check out more Inferno Intel content on our website, infernointel.com, and on Twitter at Inferno Intel. For Kobe Bronstein and the rest of the crew, I'm Aaron Gonzalez. Thank you for the privilege of your time and saying so long from Studio 6. We'll see you next time on Inside the Inferno. <laughs>